Hey up everyone, and a happy new year to you all. Uh, 2023 is officially done with, so it's that time of the year where your suggestion page on YouTube is full of film vloggers everywhere giving you the top 10 list of movies from the year that's gone by. And me being the big sheep that I am, I thought I would do the same. But I love doing this video because it's an excuse to talk about some of my favorite movies of the year again. I only have one rule for a film to qualify for my list, and that is that I have to have seen the film in the last 12 months. I watch a lot of movies, but even I haven't seen all the movies that 2023 had to offer. For whatever reason, I still haven't managed to see certain films like Bottoms, Godzilla Minus One, Rye Lane, Polite Society, Saw 10, Dream Scenario, and Passages. So yeah, none of them will be making an appearance in this video, sorry. If you think I need to prioritize watching any of those films that I just mentioned, yeah, do let me know in that comment section down below. I'll do my best to watch, and if I love it, I'll do a review of it as well. But before we dive into the top 10, I just want to take a moment to thank all you guys so much for this past year with your support by watching, liking, commenting, sharing my content. Like, it really does mean a lot to me and you managed to help me get to my end of year target of 7,000 subscribers and I'm very grateful for that, honestly. Thank you so much. My next goal for this year is to get to 10,000 subscribers. So yeah, if you want to support my channel, please do keep watching and liking, sharing where you can. It really does help the algorithm. So yeah, I just want to say thank you all who have been there for me the past 12 months. I, I love you guys so much. And yeah, if you are new to the channel and you like movie, TV, and award season coverage, like Oscar predictions and all that, yeah, go ahead and click subscribe, okay? Let's, uh, let's get to 10,000. Right, shall we jolly on with the video? then. Uh, just a fun little fact for you guys. Uh, this is the first top 10 movies of the year list that I've done since I've been doing YouTube where there isn't a single superhero movie or a sequel in my top 10. Yeah, first time that's ever happened. It's strange, but that just shows you how good the quality of films has been this year. Like just so many great original movies that made it into my top 10. It's been a fantastic year for cinema. Much better than 2022. I had a much harder time deciding what films were gonna go into my list this year than I did last year. But remember guys, it is just one bloke's opinion, okay? We all have different tastes when it comes to appreciating cinema. And yeah, my top 10 isn't gonna look the same as yours. Please respect my opinion and I will respect yours. And do let me know in the comment section down below what were your top 10 favorite movies of 2023. All right, so kicking off the list at number 10, which I always find is the hardest spot to fill because it's the final spot and you've got like, you know, 30 potential movies that could take this last spot. So it's like, ooh, which one do I give that final slot to? Like I just said, 2023 has been a tremendous year for cinema. So I had a very difficult time deciding what to put in at number 10. Just wait till you hear my honorable mentions later in the video. There are some doozies in there. We're like, that didn't make your top 10, Luke. Four. Anyway, for number 10, I ended up settling on Todd Haynes' May December. This is the only film on this list which I don't have my own review of to share with you guys, but I have done a co-review with the Oscar expert on his channel. I'll pop a link up there if you want to check that out. I think May December is the most finely tuned film, tonally speaking, of 2023. It's a dark comedy, a soapy melodrama, and at times a sexy and campy thriller. It's a very difficult tonal mix to get right, and in anybody else's hands, there's a very strong chance that May December would have been panned by critics, but in Todd Haynes's hands, he gets the balance just right. What I loved about May December is that it's a film that challenges you as you watch it. Todd Haynes is really good at telling stories about why questionable and complex people make the choices that they do. He's very interested in what makes people tick. And with May December, Todd Haynes has made a very interesting, entertaining, and also delightfully uncomfortable film to sit through. It's got a trifecta of great performances with two beloved actresses, Julianne Moore and Natalie Portman at the top of the game, as well as the breakout performance of Charles Melton as a man who's essentially been robbed of his own childhood. And the way Charles Melton plays it is so beautifully nuanced and subtle. It also has my favorite bit of dialogue from any film of 2023. Y'all know what I'm talking about, the hot dogs line. <laughs> yes, uh, you can watch May December on Now TV or Sky in the UK, or I think it's available to watch on Netflix in other regions. At number nine, we have perhaps the most zen film of 2023. It's Vim Wenders' Perfect Days. What I love about Perfect Days is that it's a film where nothing particularly exciting or eventful happens, and yet, 
I was completely enamored watching it. I'm talking edge of my seat engaged. That in itself is something to marvel at. The film follows the day-to-day -day life of a middle-aged man called Hirayama, played by Can Best Actor winner Koji Yakusho, who lives in Tokyo in a bare essentials flat and has a job as a public toilet cleaner. And we watch him go about his day, his regular routine with grace, gratitude and dignity. His life isn't glamorous by any means, he doesn't really have much, but he seems content. In many ways, he seems to have everything figured out. This film also gets a few bonus points because they did end up using a quote from my review for this film in the trailers. So to paraphrase me, Perfect Days is a profound tale of finding peace, beauty, and meaning in day-to-day -day life. And no movie this year, perhaps even this decade, has made me feel quite like Perfect Days did. In this hectic, chaotic world, watching a film like Perfect Days acts as a sort of therapy. At least it did for me anyways, because it reminded me to be grateful for what I already have and to appreciate the little things which make life worth living, like nature and music, family and photography. I really hope you guys check this one out because a film like Perfect Days will help to recalibrate your mind, your body and soul, okay? It's in UK cinemas from the 23rd of February. Coming in at number eight, we have the latest film from the GOAT, Martin Scorsese, with his adaptation of David Grant's real life crime drama, Killers of the Flower Moon. The long awaited and highly anticipated film from Scorsese finally got its debut at this year's Cannes Film Festival and it did did not disappoint. This sprawling crime drama slash western opened our eyes to one of the largest atrocities in American history, that being the murder of countless indigenous people of the Osage community. I know not everybody loved the fact that it was over three hours long, but for me, I loved watching every second of it. It is a gripping story of greed, corruption, family, and trust. The cat is in the room and he's being very playful. Hello, do you mind? I'm trying to record here. What are you what do you like? Alright, tell you what, I'm not gonna hold my mug. I'm gonna hold my cat. <laughs> He's clearly wanting attention right now, so yeah. Where was I? Everything about this film screams quality. The performances, the cinematography, the costumes, the set design. It's no wonder why Scorsese has become synonymous with cinema, because the proof is in the pudding with this film. The details matter, the world feels lived in. Are we done now? Do you wanna get down? Okay. Love you. No two ways about it, Martin Scorsese is a world-class filmmaker. At 81 years old, Killers of the Flower Moon stands out as one of Scorsese's best, certainly in my top five of his works. You can now stream this film on Apple TV+. At number seven, we have Alexander Payne's best film since Sideways, which coincidentally features the reunion of him and his Sideways star, Paul Giamatti. It's of course, The Holdovers. Like Leo and Scorsese, these two, Payne and Giamatti, create magic together. What I love about The Holdovers is that it's a Christmas movie that you can watch at any time during the year. Like, don't get me wrong, this is certainly gonna be in my roster of movies I watch annually every December, but the brilliance of this film is that it's a comedic drama first, then Christmas movie second. You know that expression which gets thrown around a lot during film discourse these days? They don't make them like they used to. Well, no a film of 2023 did that feel more applicable to than The Holdovers. Alexander Payne truly has made a film which feels like it was made in the 1970s. So it's a new film which feels like a relic and somehow it already feels like a classic. It really is rare that we get a film like The Holdovers and when something's rare that makes it feel more special and The Holdovers really is a special film. It's out in UK cinemas January 19th. I don't know why they didn't release this film in December because it is a Christmas movie, but I highly recommend going to check it out, okay? It is a crowd pleaser. Coming in at number six, we have what I believe is the best biopic of 2023, and that's because it's a biopic made with the vision, scope, and spectacle of Christopher Nolan. It is, of course, Oppenheimer. I think that's what I love about Oppenheimer is that it plays by its own rules. It doesn't follow the typical biopic formula. It's not like a linear timeline of greatest hits of the subject's life. Instead, Christopher Nolan gives us segments of Oppenheimer's life and weaves them together to paint a far more intricate picture of one of history's most complex figures because to some he could be viewed as a hero, some he could be viewed as a villain, and ultimately 
Oppenheimer was someone who came to hate his own creation. There's a lot of thematic depth to explore there. And it was just so satisfying to see Killian Murphy finally given the leading role in a Christopher Nolan movie and to see him absolutely smash it out of the park. With Dune Part 2 delayed till 2024, Oppenheimer really filled the void of showstopper film of the year. It came so close to making a billion dollars this movie. It exceeded expectations, but it is still the highest grossing biopic movie ever made, and rightfully so. Take that, Bohemian Rhapsody. And it just goes to show that big budget summer popcorn movies can also be intelligent and there's an appetite for them, okay? People went to see this movie and no wonder, okay? It is a capital M movie. At number five, we've got a gripping courtroom drama with Justine Trier's Anatomy of a Fall, which of course won the Palme d'Or at this year's Cannes Film Festival and rightfully so. The acting in this film is out of this world. This film has, in my opinion, the best performance of 2023 with Sandra Hewler firing on all cylinders as a woman standing trial for the potential murder of her husband. She had me in her grasp from start to finish. There's also another incredible performance which doesn't get nearly as much credit as he deserves and that's for Milo Mercado Garner who plays Sandra Hewler's son Danny in this film. One of the best child performances I've ever seen. And this film has quite possibly the best performance from a dog in the history of cinema. Oh yes, don't believe me? Check it out. So yeah, top-notch acting. It is brilliantly written and gorgeously shot. It's taut, it's tense, and it's just a terrific movie. And number four, we have what was probably the biggest surprise of 2023 for me. And while some may argue it is a biopic, I think of it more of a rom-com that's loosely based on someone's life. But yeah, nobody was expecting much from this film when it was announced as part of the Venice Film Festival lineup, but it ended up being the surprise hidden gem of the festival. It's Richard Linklater's Hitman. This film hasn't been released yet. It's been acquired by Netflix, which I'm a little bit upset about because this really is a film best experienced with a crowd and yet it's going straight to Netflix, which is a bit of a shame because honest to God, watching this film three times in the cinema this year was one of the genuine highlights of the year for me. Like I relished watching this film with the crowd, enjoying that communal uh, experience of enjoying a good rom-com. Hitman is so damn charming. I've yet to find somebody who's watched this and didn't at least like it. The story is about a fake hitman who falls in love with one of his targets and it's the most delightful genre cocktail of screwball comedy, thriller, noir, and romance. It is so finely balanced in tone and is such a breezy watch. Glenn Powell and Adria Ahona are without a doubt the sexiest on-screen pairing I have seen this year. And I mean sizzling. Like between Hitman and anyone but you, Glenn Powell's really proven himself to have chemistry with just about anyone. The man can have chemistry with a freaking cactus. I really think Hitman is gonna be like a launching pad for Glenn Powell and Adria Ahona to be in bigger and better projects because they've both been so underrated for quite a while now. The thing about Hitman is it's not a movie that's been made with the intention of winning awards, even though it would totally be worthy of winning some, but it's not made for awards recognition, okay? It's made to entertain and it does just that and so brilliantly. Do not miss this one next year, guys, okay? And if you can watch it in a cinema, I implore you to do so. I cannot wait for you guys to watch it. So I took a poll on Instagram and Twitter and asked what film you guys thought would be in at number one on this list. And most of you guys guessed this next film, and I understand why, because it's probably the film I've discussed the most this year on my channel and on my socials. And as you probably already clocked, I do have a lot of merchandise of this film as well. So yeah, coming in at number three, we have one of the most definitive movies of 2023. It is, of course, Greta Gerwig's Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Ken. Yay, space. <laughs> Sublime. <laughs> I have not stopped quoting this film since July, okay? It is a part of my personality now. Barbie was without a doubt my most anticipated film of 2023. That was mostly because it was a Greta Gerwig film and also because of the stacked cast and I was expecting it to be good, but I wasn't expecting it to be that good. This film is a treat in every sense of the word. Visually, aesthetically, musically, thematically. I've talked so much about Barbie on my channel that I don't know what I can say here that I haven't already said. But I'm just grateful that we have a film like Barbie and that it's the biggest success story of the year. Like, 
But the highest grossing movie of the year was written and directed by a woman. That's the first time that's ever happened. But yeah, it was so much fun getting swept up in the Barbie mania this year, wasn't it? Like, it was so cool seeing everyone getting their pictures in the Barbie box or, you know, everyone embracing pink and wearing it to screenings and going to see the film multiple times with friends because of how much fun we had watching it in the cinema, like singing along to all the songs like Dance the Night and I'm Just Ken. And yeah, that's what I love about this film. It just, it really helped save cinema this year, that and Oppenheimer. And I'm just, like I said, I'm just so grateful for the success of Barbie. Like Hitman, I saw Barbie three times in cinemas this year. And each time I watched it, it just got better because I noticed things that I didn't notice in the previous viewings. And I just realized how much of a film it is for film lovers as well. Like the references that Greta Gerwig packs in here to so many different movies is just, it's, it's genius. In the words of Ken, it's sublime. Barbie made me laugh, it made me cry, and it reminded me of the joy of being alive, which is something that, funnily enough, my number two entry has in common. I was trying to decide whether to put the next entry on this list in at number two or at number one, because honestly, it could be my number one of the year. It kind of depends on what day of the week it is. But as of right now, as of today, I'm giving the number two slot to Yorgos Lanthimos's Poor Things, the most weird and wonderful film of 2023. The thing about Poor Things is that it's a super simple story about a woman's journey of self-discovery and identity told in the most beautiful, bonkers, and raunchiest way possible. Like, it's an odd movie, but it's accessible to everyone because the themes of it are so universal. Emma Stone delivers a career best performance as Bella Baxter, a curious duckling with an appetite for adventure, and on her travels, she learns all about the beauty and hardships of life. And she somehow manages to convincingly condense 30 years worth of personal development into a two hour film. It's astonishing, and she is backed up by a pitch perfect supporting cast, which includes Willem Dafoe, Mark Ruffalo and Catherine Hunter. It's out in UK cinemas on the 12th of January. I cannot wait to go watch this film again with Glenn and I hope you guys all do so too. It's gonna get nominated for a ton of Oscar nominations. So yeah, go check it out. All right now, we're at the honorable mentions section of the video. And like I said, 2023, what a year for cinema. So many great movies, so many to list here as well. So let's see if I can do this all in one breath. <gasps> 1001, Air, Megan, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, Are You There God, It's Me Margaret, Bo is Afraid, Evil Dead Rise, Past Lives, Monster, The Zone of Interest, The Hunger Games, Bow Out of Songbirds and Snakes, Fallen Leaves, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, Blackberry, <laughs> oh, out of breath. John Wick 4, Elemental, Maestro, Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves, Saltburn, The Boy and the Heron, The Creator, American Fiction, Wonka, The Color Purple, The Iron Claw, How to Have Sex, and Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1. Those were all my honorable mentions. I think the one I'm most sad that didn't make it in was Celine Song's Past Lives. So yeah, if this were a top 11, that would take the 11th spot. But yeah, please do let me know your top 10 favorite movies of 2023 in that comment section down below. But we're here anyways, we made it to number one. And like I said, sometimes I feel like Poor Things was my favorite film of the year, but on other days I feel like this is more my favorite because it just hit me harder in the feels, this film. I saw this film at the London Film Festival this year with a bunch of other film vloggers and journalists. And after we came out of the screening, we all just like collectively sobbed and gathered ourselves, like comforted each other because of how powerful this movie was. But yes, for that reason, my number one favorite film of 2023 is Andrew Haig's All of Us Strangers. <sighs> wow, no film hit me as hard this year as all of the strangers did. Now granted, I am the target demographic for this film because it is a story very much about the gay experience, uh, which I very much identified with, but Lord, did this movie come down on me like a ton of bricks. I've been a big fan of Andrew Haig's ever since I saw his debut film Weekend back in 2011, and it's been wonderful to watch his growth as a filmmaker over the past 10 years or so. And even though All of Us Strangers is technically an adaptation of a Japanese novel, the, there's something about the film which still feels very intimate and personal to Andrew Haig's own experiences. It feels like he's bearing his soul in this movie. This film is so many things all at once. It's beautiful, heartfelt, tragic, devastating, uplifting, melancholy and cathartic. I'm not kidding when I say that All of Us Strangers kind of 
broke me. Like, I left this film utterly shattered, but as time went on and I had, you know, the space to ruminate on the film, it also allowed me to heal from things from my past that I didn't know I needed to heal from. Like, there was something so comforting about this movie, even though it's so sad. Like, this movie has healing powers. I, I, it's hard to put into words, but yeah, that's why it means so much to me because it just, it touched a part of my soul. It's a film about reconciling with the past and making peace with it, having the conversations that we were too afraid to have when we were younger, exchanging the hugs that we dared not give. This film had such an effect on me that I actually picked up the phone and called my parents to tell them how much I loved them after I saw this film. That's how moved I was by it. The thing about All of Us Strangers is you don't need to be a gay man in order to connect with the story. Like, so much of it is relatable. It's about family and connection and wanting to feel loved and accepted. These are like fundamental basic human needs that we can all relate to. But yeah, All of Us Strangers comes out on the 26th of January in UK cinemas and if I have any sort of influence, you will trust me when I say you need to go watch this film in cinemas. Please go support All of Us Strangers, okay? It's films like this which remind me of why I like talking about films on the internet for all of us internet strangers, you know? So yeah, this is why I love doing what I do. The reason I love going to the cinema is to be moved and to feel something, to connect with an artist and this film just gets it so right. This is the type of movie I live for and I'm so grateful for it. Thank you, Andrew Haig. But there you have it guys, those are my top 10 films of 2023. What did you think of my list? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? If you've enjoyed the video, please do help me out by hitting the little like button. If you want more movie TV and Oscars related content, don't forget to click subscribe. And as always, thank you guys so much for all your support this last year and for more things related to movies, TV, the Oscars, and popcorn culture. I'm Luke Airfield, and I'll see you in 2024.